It has been way too long. Greetings! How you doing? Two minutes after the top of the hour on this 26th day of May. Live in a multiple location station from Global Championship Wrestling, this is GCW Radio. GCW Commissioner, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane, live from Studio One in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. I mean Birmingham, Alabama. Like to welcome in one of my tag team partners. He is the manager of the Sevenfold Saints. He is the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. It is so hard to fold a uh, fitted sheet. Do we need quantum physics for this? Like, really? <laughs> yes, we do. Because <laughs> I have to do that too. I just go ahead and stick it in a giant press and let it go at that. Either that or put it in a space bag and just let the vacuum take all the air out of it. There you go. And ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> from the Phoenix 7 in Gulf Shores, Alabama, welcoming back to the airwaves, first off, the manager, if you will, for the powers that be, hashtag PTB. The cause, Robert Cosper, welcome aboard. Yeah, well, it, it, manager, no. Advisor, yes, but it's not an advisor to the powers that be. I'm a member of the powers that be. Actually, a founding member. So uh, let's, let's try and keep that straight, too, brother. Original. Original. CTB original. How about that? What you like? What you, what you think? And if he has made it back from the hot tub yet... He said he was going to take his own sweet, happy time about it. Ladies and gentlemen, he is one half of the GCW Tag Team Champions. Excuse me, World Tag Team Champions. Sounds a little better. Thank you. I'll get it right eventually. Leave me alone. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, welcome aboard. Should I get in the hot tub? <laughs> is it going to make me wet? Is it going to make me sweat? Good God. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we have convened this very special edition of Global Championship Wrestling's GCW Radio this Saturday night. It is finally here. Global Warfare 2015. Some would say Global Warfare 5. At least that's what one of the posters says. There are some huge matches signed, but before I go any further, I want to say thank you to everybody listening in through BeyondRingside.com, through the Beyond Ringside radio app for Android, Amazon, and Blackberry, through Shoutcast, through Winamp, through Ustream this evening. We are live on all fronts. To everybody over in the chat room this evening, glad to have you on board. I see Daryl B. in Hot Ice already. Thank you for joining us. What's up, Daryl B.? How you doing, man? <clears throat> Hot Ice. Make sure you have those powers of peace on. Change your batteries in your megaphone because you're going to get yeah. tired of yelling. I've heard he's going to bring a solar-powered megaphone this time. That way he's got power to spare. He needs all the help he can get. Yes, he's going to get all the help he can get. Now, the world, I would dare say by now, knows about the main event, which is a 12-man, two-team cage elimination warfare match. Before we start getting into that, and I want to say, we've, but folks, before anybody starts to try to misread anything, we've had a conversation off air. Legal teams have been advised and are listening. We have stated the fact that with all of the ill will that is around and all the bad air that's flowing, we have opted to keep everything on a professional, civil, and somewhat cordial level for this hour. Hey, I like Cause and I like Dan. I respect those guys. They just happen to be on the wrong end of the uh, spectrum this this uh, turnaround. Opinions vary. Yeah, that's where you're already stepping over the line. That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're going to keep it nice. Hey, we couldn't. This day couldn't be any better. You know, General Patton used to give his de- guys a few days off before they went to war. So yeah. my good friend but, guys, you know, he he said let's let's just hop in the old convertible. We're going to go for a trip. Make sure you got a bag for a few days. And, you know, I've been busting my chops and UIW and APCW. And, you know, I'm getting ready for this big deal. And, I mean, this this is going to be one of the biggest matches of my career. It's not my first cage match. won't be my last. But it's the one that's most current. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, let's throw a little respect out there. I, I respect the GCW heavyweight champion, AJ Steele. I respect the middleweight champion spiral. I respect the sevenfold saints. But you got two greenhorn turds that have been in this business less than two years, probably hadn't had 24 matches together put together. Yeah. 
And how in the hell? And I'm gonna keep it nice because I'm so relaxed after the massage in the hot tub. I'm, I'm just Dylan Cook and Leon the Bull Stresser <laughs> putting out a video at a woman's fitness place. That boy had 35 pound dumbbells, guys. Bull, bull, bull. Just, oh, you know, yeah. My nine-month-old daughter could pick up 35-pound dumbbells. I'm serious. <laughs> Clean and snatch. Finish. I don't know. I mean, Wick, that, you got two weak links right there, you know? Yeah. What are you, you going to do with that? And, and you don't like cops, so how in the hell did you let this guy get on your team? Actually, you guys, uh, well, the circle of disrespect did it. You guys did. You guys brought it on. I mean, we have a common enemy in you guys. Uh, but let, let's say what it is. Dylan... Dylan uh, Cook is a great Matt wrestler. No charisma. Zero charisma. I have seen walls of paint with more charisma than Dylan Cook. But yeah. that's something, you know, we don't, have, we don't, you don't have to worry about charisma in the steel cage. Leon. You're right. Leon to me is the X factor. Now, in all honesty, let's put everything aside. Let's, I know we're pulling back the curtains a little bit. Uh, you trained Leon, so you know Leon up and down, Dan. Uh, I know Dylan up and down. I've taught him everything he knows, but you know, you never show him everything. Never. Oh, I know. Oh, you see, but that's what they have just come to understand is you teach them everything they know, but not everything you know. Well, you know that. I know yeah. that. Cos knows that. Eddie knows that. Yes. They were not aware of that, but I had to pull them aside and said, "Look, everything that you know about Dan, everything you know about Joshua O'Hagan, throw it out the window. This is what it is. It's a fight. This is for." the control the absolute control of gcw we know what's at stake you guys know what's at stake but my question is is that there there is some tension between spiral and aj yes that is true but the last time we saw mike cruz and joshua hagan thank you. joshua hagan was hitting his his irish necktie on him right there in the middle of the ring so i don't know how they can gel together and i don't think the circle of disrespect even cares about this match i think they just see it as another match now well, they the only person that's going after is AJ because AJ to to Fran Francisco sees AJ as a threat, and we know that is two ring generals. We have a lot of ring generals in this. That's very very seldom that you see this in a steel cage match. You guys know this. A lot of times you see a lot of guys thrown into this that aren't ready. I believe that Dylan and Leon are ready. You know AJ Spiral, Clyde and Steven are ready. This is not their first. Uh, shut the. <laughs> oh, hey, somebody's calling on the dogs. You got this dog, to this dog is 100 pounds, and I'm going to have to punch him. This big ass bulldog will not shut up. As soon as Kyle started villain? talking, he started barking. I, I do apologize. Who's, who's I'm sorry. The, who's, who's the villains yeah. here? Yeah, the I'm backers? just saying, I, you know, your team's the one running down fans and telling them who they got to cheer for and yeah. not whoa, cheer. Whoa, 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 whoa. Leon doesn't know any better. I'm totally on. Get yeah. off Facebook. One yeah. post is all you need. <laughs> He's not. Let this be an opening to everybody. This, Eddie, you know this. We have talked about this. Cause you and I have talked uh, talked about this. Dan, you and I have spoken about this going up and down the road, and I'm sure Andrew can agree with us. One post is enough, and there's no reason to attack the fans. There's bigger. There's bigger things at hand. Once he takes his eyes off the prize, I believe that that's when you lose. You yeah, have to stay focused. That's what happens when you put a cop on your team. Yeah, they they got to have the last word. And that's that's part of what I keep trying to tell you, brother. Mm -hmm. Because you know I respect you. I do. You know, and you you taught me a ton, but I'm telling you, you're back in a loser right Look, here. Look, to me, to me, Leon is the X factor in this war games. To me, Leon, the bull stressor, is the X factor. I've said it on several occasions, and I'll say it again. To me, if Leon can even go, can even go up to what he did whenever he faced the circle of disrespect, I'll be happy with that. But he's a bleeder. We already yeah. seen that. <laughs> You can't, oh, he, I mean, the guy could bleed out. I mean, I know there's going to be medical staff standing by, but you need to find out his blood type, bro. Yeah. Because I mean, not gonna stitch him up. Get a donor, man. Oh, he He's would cry if you stitched him up. I would like to see it. No Novocaine, okay. please. I will pay gladly. Gentlemen, Look, do me do me a favor. I discussed this recently on the To Be Determined show. And I want to bring this out to play, and I'd like to get your feedback. I wanted to originally run down the entire card before we got into this. But tell you what, let's play on this. Because there's some things that have been laying on my brain in a big way going into this match. Everybody knows if you were there all the way January, February, March, and April, you know that there's bad blood brewing. 
more than just that. I'll just go ahead and say it. There's some people that just flat out don't like each other. Yes, look at I'm going to look at your side of the board first for the PTB Foundation on this. I like the way you said that. Yeah, With a little five star Fight Club mixed yeah. in. I mean, it, what a what a. Well, according to O'Hagan, he's part of the PTB. So therefore, five star Fight Club went the way of the yellow speckled dodo bird. No, no. never. We still got merchandise to sell, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I couldn't help myself on that one. Yeah, never split, brother. I will. I learned from the best, Eddie Lane. If you don't promote yourself, who's going to promote you? Thank you. And here we are. We see, you know, we the olive branch was extended. Yeah. We're out here. But let's look at this for a second. He is out in the sand, yeah. and we're we're here. So go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. I'm I, I'm out of practice with this radio stuff. Yeah, it's been a yeah. couple. It's, it's been a, it's been a cup of coffee, here. right? But let's look at this real quick. And we've got a very special guest who's going to be coming on board. And I would like to get his feedback on this one also. But let's look at the chemical makeup of the PTB Foundation coming up this Saturday. You've got the King of Florida, Francisco Chiazzo. The Emerald Emperor, Simon Says. Yes. The Circle of Disrespect will be in full force. You've got one of the best cruiserweights out there in Mike Cruz. Yeah, You've got the best. Yeah, I say the best. Him well, O'Hagan's well, wait a minute. O'Hagan's going to have something to say about that because part of the PTB Foundation is Mr. O'Hagan, one yeah, of the most best cruiserweights out there, one of the most decorated champions in GCW history. And then you put it together with the base of the powers that be, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer and Micah Taylor. Let's look at this for a hot second here. Yeah, who's going to stop that? No, yeah. this is a hot hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dude, wait, let's, 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 Sherman in Georgia just going to You pop. have you have the two most decorated guys in GCW history in Mad Dog Dan Sawyer and Joshua Hagen. Also the most decorated tag team or one half of the most decorated tag team uh in the history of GCW, Teddy Tutwell the 3rd and the Money Makers on the outside. But what you guys don't have is an Ebony is an Ebony Monolith. We have an AJ Steel. I think that speaks volumes. He is our Hulk. If I was about to say, if you said we've got a Hulk, I was going to smack you on your head. Grow a yeah. mohawk and I'll flatten. I've got a weed eater. We'll flatten the mohawk again. Short that, that's, great. that's great that you have AJ because we've made no bones about it. It's, been, it's no AJ is our target, man. We have a bullseye on AJ. No pun intended. Because there are, there, are, there are three guys. No pun intended. <laughs> there are three guys, man. But let three. me lay this one out here. I want y'all to think about this. Dog, you and Micah have had battles before with the COD. Cruz and O'Hagan were at each other's throats recently. I'm just going to go ahead and bring him straight on in. Francisco Chiazzo, the king of Florida, part of the circle of disrespect. Hashtag show in a box together. How can, how can you expect this team to coexist this coming Saturday night in Pell City, Alabama with Global Warfare? Well, it's, it's, it's actually pretty simple. You know, they say there's uh, that, what's that old adage? There's no honor amongst thieves. Yeah. Well, that really doesn't play into uh, doesn't really come into play in this because we're not thieves. So you, you really thought I was going somewhere else with that, didn't you, Eddie Powell? So but the fact of the matter is, myself, Micah Taylor, Mad Dog, Dan Sawyer, O'Hagan, Mike Cruz, Simon Says, T3. See, so we've got one common goal in this whole crazy world. This whole parallel universe. Because if somebody would have told me a year ago that I'd be standing on the same side of a steel cage with those guys that I just mentioned outside of the foundation, I'd have told you you were crazy. But again, we've got one common goal in this whole thing. And that's the demise of guys like A.J. Steele, like that word. the Saints, that stupid Mohawk-wearing freak of a manager of theirs, Yay. Pandora, you see, we want to rid GCW in Pell City, Alabama, of people who want to claim to be heroes. See, me and AJ Steele have been going at it for the last six months. Now, are me and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer and Micah Taylor the best of friends? Are we breaking bread night in and night out? Absolutely not. Is there still a little uh, uh, professional jealousy amongst us? Absolutely, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Because once we're done with these guys, who's to say that Mad Dog won't reach over and punch me dead in my mouth and vice versa? See, but that's okay, because we know what we're all about. See, AJ Steele, the Saints, and, and 
and uh, spiral, biggest bunch of eagle maniacs that I've ever seen in my entire life. Amen. See, with the PTB Foundation <laughs> are going to fight together, we're going to bleed together, and we're going to walk out of that cage victorious this Saturday night at Global Warfare 5 in Pell City, Alabama. Now, can you dig that? <laughs> that is amazing. That's why I love Francisco. Francisco is one of the guys that tells it how it is. He tells you, we're not going, we're not thieves. Francisco, I see you more of an Italian mafia, like a, like a Slambino. Uh, <laughs> Slambinos! <laughs> Look, I, dude, I, I, you know how I feel about you. In all honesty, you are one of the best in the Southeast, bar none. You bring something different to the steel cage match that I'm telling you. Dylan and Leon better be ready. I have been preparing them for this, but there's only one way to prepare for this. is to be in the ring with guys like yourself. And there's not many guys like yourself. There's not many guys like Dan Sawyer. There's not many guys like Joshua Hagan. There's not many guys like the circle of disrespect, disrespect as a whole. I know that. My team knows that. You guys are gelling so well. But, once again, I throw this out there, sir. Why is this not just another match for you? You have your plate full in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, and Tennessee. Why is this not just another match to you, Francisco? I'll tell you why it's not just another match, because this match is about respect. This match is about teaching lessons. When you step into a ring with guys like Micah Taylor, myself, Mad Dog, Emerald Emperor, Mike Cruz, see, we're all about respect. We're all about teaching lessons, kicking teeth, taking names. But come Sunday morning, when guys like Dylan Cook and the Bull, see, I chuckle when I say his name, the Bull, because he's, he's, he's full of. <laughs> throw it away. Throw it away. <laughs> I actually, I laugh. I can't. I can't even take the guy seriously. Every time I see him in Pell City, his pants get higher and higher and oh higher. Come sat. Come Saturday, his pants are going to be a hat. Come Saturday, you expect me to take a flat foot like him serious? Do you expect me to take a guy like Dylan Cook serious? Has anyone told Dylan Cook that the sun is free? Maybe go lay out, maybe do a couple bench presses, maybe some, maybe some push-ups, some Hindu squats. Maybe pop some of those pimples on his stupid little baby face. You know, the only ones out of that team that I'm remotely, remotely worried about would be A.J. Steele, Spiral, and Clyde Braddock. See, I can't even say Styles because the guy's a freaking goofball, reads comic books, and is only a... Above Dylan Cook with the pimple popping category. That's your team? And he's got a bad limp from that inside toe hole. Yeah, it's time to look healthy. You have halfway described Simon Says. (laughs) Oh, see, see, Simon Simon right now is listening to this. I know Simon is. And and I can tell you he's going to be angry. Bow before Says. And he shows up. When he shows up to Pell City, Alabama, angry, and takes his question mark cane and shoves it up your <laughs> sideways, <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to be responsible for that comment that you made. You see, if I were you, you made. I would just stand on the outside, <laughs> cheer for your team, and then lick their wounds at the end of the night. Because come Sunday when the PTB Foundation has completely taken over GCW, then maybe, and only then, we'll go ahead and take care of the business that we all have with one another. You know what? I, I'm so glad that you come on. Simon, I hope that you're listening. Simon is cut from a cloth like no other. Simon was one of the best managers, hands down, and become one of the best workers because that's what Simon says is a worker. And you know what? If we really want to boil it down, you're looking at some of the most decorated workers to ever come through the halls of GCW on one side. Then you have a, a, a four workers, workers and two wrestlers. Mm-hmm. It is my job, sir. It is my job to get them ready. To get them ready for this. There is no way for them to get ready than to face guys like yourself. They better be prepared. Dylan, Leon, you better be prepared. Because there's no charisma needed. But what there is, is fortitude. 
there has to be a certain point that you come together in your career and this is it. This is the point in their career that they decide that they decide that they have to come back and they have to battle for their very existence. And this is the moment, sir. Yeah, With all due respect to you guys, you guys are ready. Well, Our guys better be ready. I don't know how, I don't know how you think they're going to be. But, but let me let me backtrack on something that Francisco said a minute ago, and, and let's talk about AJ Steele, because Teddy and I, Teddy and I have already had the game plan laid out, and the foundation PTB have it. AJ Steele, we don't know what number he's going to enter the cage at, but the deal is AJ Steele is on a first come first serve basis, whether it's Francisco Chiato that gets him first, whether it's Mad Dog Dan Sawyer that gets him first, whether it's the Hawaiian Hitman Micah Taylor that gets him first. AJ Steele is going down. AJ Steele is going to be injured. AJ Steele is going to be hurt. He is going to be softened up because he has to defend that GCW heavyweight championship against all three of these men at some point. And there's uh, no way he survives. There's no uh, way. Cause, how is Mad Dog feeling after that ass whooping he took from AJ Steele, which you're welcome, Mad Dog? And how is Joshua Hagen feel? Because I saw Joshua Hagen bleed from my very hands at UIW. I watched him bleed. I'm talking about absolutely bleed. So you have two guys that aren't at 100%. Playing a and scratch, and, he, and Joshua Hagen is feeling it's, it's like not a, a scratch. champion. He's feeling like a United States champion. You know, the boy, grew, the, the boy grew up in Boston. If he would have just been drunk, it would have just been another day. But he wasn't. But he wasn't because he's professional. So take that, Francisco. Oh, bro. <laughs> That's like the eighth concussion I've given Joshua Hagen. And by the way, GCW, <laughs> you're welcome. I told you. I warned you guys, be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Now you have the most powerful entity that ever has existed in GCW in the circle of disrespect, which I love the fact that Francisco is talking about respect, which he should should be talking about impacts and Zubas. And you have the powers that be as one. Yeah. How do you how do you combat how do you combat that? How do you fight it's that? like the if, since we're getting all styles love, it's like the Legion of Doom with Lex Luthor and all the right. Joker. I mean, yeah, you take like the baddest of bad. Yeah, you, you, you take all that and mix it up. You know, I, I tell you what, I will give him this. Bull and uh, Cook are kind of like Zana and Jan, the, uh, the, the <laughs> twins, <laughs> the Wonder Twins. Which one of them's going to do the ice bucket and which one of them's going to do water? I don't know. And they better bring that little blue monkey with them. I, I can't remember his name. I'd have Gleek. to call Styles and get him to tell us. No, that'd be Gleek. Gonna, I'm oh like, Jesus! Yeah, like yeah. Gleek. But, but look at it this way: if you want to go, if you want to go comic book to, to make Steve Styles happy, honestly, let's cross the universes here. Let's 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 cross the streams, Eddie. I know you're right. Oh, oh. Let's, let's cross the streams. But go ahead. Everybody clear their mind. Everybody yes. clear their mind. Because not only not only with the talent that you have on our team, you have leading the team. You have outside that have set the game plan for what we are going to do. I mean, you, you pretty well have loose kingpin calling the shots outside in, in, in TT3 and myself. And with all the hair you have growing right now, you could be Gorilla Grodd, right? Oh, oh, oh God. Somebody, you got somebody no, that would be right AJ. Gorilla right. Grodd looks like AJ Steele. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, don't, don't, don't cause a riot in Baltimore or Ferguson. Said, but uh, out of hand. No, I mean, I'm not talking about New Day tonight. <laughs> oh, geez. Don't even talk about that company. Those just stole more stuff from us in the last six weeks. Hashtag shoot unstoppable. And <laughs> meanwhile, do me in a favor. Days finisher, come on. Okay, Fr Francisco, I have to ask you this, sir. Uh, you have you have one of the most grueling uh, road schedules that has ever been seen uh, since the territory days. Uh, how do you think this will affect you going in to the steel cage match this Saturday? Well, I mean, you know. As much as I like to say that I'm not human, I am human. So of course, you know I'm 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 tired and banged up, uh, but that's what we do. That's what I signed up for. Uh, that's what I just what I do for a living. I'm a professional wrestler. I travel from town to town, from city to city, and border to border, and uh, collect my money and move on to the next town. You know, uh, when you batter and bruise, you tape it up and you move on to the next town. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, I block it out of my mind and we go in for the kill. Uh, it's what it's all about. 
Um, am I going to sit here and tell you that my schedule has nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, doesn't gonna affect me at all? No, I'd be, I'd be full of this shit. I'm going to sit here and tell you that's not going to affect me. Absolutely it is. But I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, there's uh, very few that are better than me. Uh, forget about the Southeast. I'll go ahead and say the whole damn country. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, there's, uh, there's very few guys that are going to be able to stand in my way. That's AJ Steele and Spiral included. Uh, Clyde Braddock, uh, Steven Stiles makes no difference. Uh, hell, I've ran through Micah Taylor. I've ran through Mad Dog. They've ran through me. Uh, none of us are strangers to one another. We know what we all bring to the table. We know all of our shortcomings, uh, positives, negatives, and so on and so forth. But the good thing about this team is we're going to be able to accentuate our positives and hide our negatives, uh, unlike the other team with guys like Dylan Cook and the Bull, who have more negatives than positives. I'm not really sure if uh, you're going to be able to hide them. Uh, speaking of negatives, uh, I just thought of Bull again and something else that came to my mind. You ever see those fishermen that stand in the water? What are those things called? Waders? Yeah. Those things on those. That, 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 that's what his pants look like. Every time I see him, it's been bothering me for the last three months. What he looks like. He looks like a fisherman standing in some pond somewhere catching a fish. That's what he looks like. Except he doesn't catch so, any fish. He's right. a loser at that. He, he throws his fish. line out there yeah. and never gets a bite. Uh, well, you know who else was a fly Facebook fisherman? Might get a bite from a fake profile. <laughs> well, you know who was a fly fisherman and also wore waders? FDR. So I'm just throwing that out there. He's dead, oh, though. Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, but he had a, some success in his he life. Did. He, he did. Explain he, to me where Bull Stress was. Yeah, he had a group called the Rough Riders. You know, well, we all know that we all know that Bull has not been the same since he was jumped uh, several months ago. Daddy, excuse me. <laughs> the other damn Roosevelt. Yeah. Am I right? That was a terrible incident. That was a travesty of justice that that, that happened. Was... I was so sorry to hear about that. I sent him flowers. They were dead, but I sent him flowers. I mean, it was it was sad what happened to him. Well, I actually have to cut in because he should. Wait, wait, wait. He actually posted the bouquet, so I'm, I got to give you credit. You're the only person I know that knows how to send dead plastic flowers. He's spray, <laughs> you spray paint them, Eddie. That's how it works. No. Do you not watch The Godfather? Francisco yes. Chiazzo is Sonny, is Sonny Corleone. That's how I see Francisco. <laughs> well, here's the deal, guys. Come this Saturday night, this match is going to be violent. This match, none of us are going to be the same when we walk out of that cage. We, we wake up on Sunday morning. Some of us may be waking up in a hospital bed. Some of us might be waking up in a hotel room, not being able to get out of bed. Uh, but at the end of the day, Global Warfare 5, it's what everyone in the Southeast is talking about, from Florida to Georgia to Alabama and hell to Tennessee and South Carolina. Everyone's coming from all points of the Southeast to see Global Warfare 5 this Saturday, Tell City, Alabama. And who do it better? <laughs> Who does it better than GCW? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. There's not a company in Alabama that can come close to what GCW is doing. GCW is the talk of the Southeast. So this Saturday, it's going to be blood, sweat, and tears. And the PTB Foundation are going to be reigning supreme, baby. Real quick, Mr. Chiazzo, before we let you run for the night, how can everybody track you down on social media? Oh, here we go. Facebook, Francisco Chiasso. Twitter, at Francisco Chiasso. Instagram, at Francisco Chiasso. And for all you gay men out there, you can find me on Pinterest, on Pinterest at Francisco Chiasso. <laughs> We're going to the bottom of the hour break, and we'll be back on GCW Radio right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget for more information on the full range of services we offer call 533 hits that's 533 h-i-t-s or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com hey this is stan grubb for wrestle rage radio right here on beyondringside.com join us every sunday night 9 p.m eastern standard time for myself and smart rage as we discuss the professional wrestling business from wwe tna and all things in between we'll have an interview here or there we'll see what we can do to just keep you entertained and along the way we're gonna have to bring up some emotion and make you think that's what we like to do 
So join us here on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you at WrestleRage. Hey, this is the voice, Ted Guinness, and I'm inviting you to tune in every Thursday night after Cause and Effect and after SmackDown goes off the air for The Show, the only show on Beyond Ringside dedicated to all things WWE, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and your phone calls. That's The Show. Every Thursday night after SmackDown goes off the air, we go live right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network and the Beyond Ringside app. Something's blowing up. <laughs> there we went. I think it might have been the sponsors or the censors one. I don't freaking know anymore. <laughs> Welcome back into GCW Radio live on a Tuesday night. Live from Studio One, the Magic City Motormouth, GCW Commissioner Fast Study Lane, live from Bohemian Grove, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. How's everyone doing tonight? I finally folded the fitted sheet, so thumbs up, soldier. I told you, space bag, suck, easy. All air gone, flat sheet, done. Look at Eddie saying suck. Yeah, yeah leave, it, leave, leave it to Eddie talking about sucking the air out of the room. You know what I mean? Like, and live from Gulf Shores, Alabama at the Phoenix 7 this evening, like to welcome in from the powers that beat the cause, Robert Cosprin, one half of the world tag team champions, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Oh, it, it is. It couldn't be a better day. That's great. Now, roll in, man. It's great. Mad Dog, yeah. Wick, y'all know the tradition. Cause, you're new to this part of the game. Oh, boy. Oh. So, in a fair and a, a fair and unbiased manner, let's take a look at the rest of the card that's going on because I think everybody knows that everybody going to the twelve man cage match is just flat pissed off. So, from that vantage point, ass whipping waiting to happen. There you go, multiple ass whippings waiting to happen. Hashtag hell damn ass. Yeah. That's what I should have said during seg one. The cane in the urethra. Don't. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us this card. I want to hear the rest. of You've got Tommy Gage taking on the last hero, Ace Haven, being accompanied to ringside by his valet, Amy Haven. Let's go around the ring on this one. Or around the horn, take your pick, even though we might get sued by ESPN for that one, but not like that's never happened before. <laughs> Robert Cosper, your thoughts. Tommy Gage, Ace Haven. Gage, all day. All day. Hey, Amy Haven's already made eyes with the guy the yeah. last time they, they you know, Last time we were in Pell City, there was a, there was the three way matchup between Ace Haven, Marza, and, and, and Tommy Gage. Uh, Amy Haven uh, was very blatant, like smitten almost. Yeah, I mean, she, she hey. made no bones about she she was she was digging the all about the Gage. Yeah. yeah, I mean it, you know people always say the guy who looks like Jerry Lynn. And the brother does look like yeah, Jerry, much younger, there, much yeah. younger, but uh, uh, younger, but yeah, yeah, Jerry he Lynn. can move, he can do a lot of things, and. You know, he seems to think that he's kind of the Rick Rude of GCW. He Easy thinks, well, yeah, I know. I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying. Yeah. If he comes out with Amy Haven's face on his tights. I will be the first person to laugh. You will be the first person to laugh. you got to beat me to it. I'm sorry. He's got, he's got, he's got some... I don't know if they met on FarmersOnly.com or they met There's on probably a good something. You know, Bull probably gave him his access code. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, Christian Mingle. You know, that's where the, all the stalkers come from. Plenty and, of fish. Uh, plenty, of- <laughs> plenty of fish. Yeah, that's a free one, isn't it? I have no idea, dude. But, oh, dude. you know, I don't know where they've been talking behind Ace's back. But, you know, Ace is a is a has been married to Amy for quite some time. They got one or two kids. Ace has more to lose than just a match this Saturday night. I yeah, man, he he better be watching out. Watch your P's and Q's. You got to do your homework, or somebody will do it for you. Oh yeah. And I'll take that as Mad Dog's assessment of the match, unless you've got something else you'd like to throw in there. I just think that that's a huge distraction. Uh, you know, it it's rough to uh, have a valet. Period. But when she's your wife, oh my God, I would never let my wife in this business. Ever, ever, ever. Right. She would make me quit. <laughs> Wicked Nemesis, your thoughts. Tommy Gay, Jace Haven. Well, I did not see the sticking out of the tongue creepily at uh, Amy Haven and Angie's up there making that disgusted face right now. But uh, 
everybody knows Ace Haven is one of the hottest commodities in the Southeast today. Uh, and Amy is the reason why he is on top. Uh, without Amy's <laughs> guidance, I don't think the Ace would be where he is. Uh, I don't see Tommy Gage uh, really... He's very creepy, but Tommy Gage is a sly guy. Uh, Tommy Gage may be the Wiley Coyote of GCW. Maybe a or, or the creepy Rob Lowe, one of the two. So I'm <laughs> going to go Ace Haven. Well, I'm not really going to throw a prediction out there per se, but I'm going to lay it out there like this. There is a there there is some great chemistry going on that can actually build a tremendous matchup between these two. We've seen Tommy Gage with Amy and Tommy. I was yeah, about to say that, you've that, seen it too. It was, on, it was on television. That's not what I meant. It's a great that's matchup. Not, that's not what I meant. I'm talking about two competitors who we've seen Gage on and off in GCW for a while. We've had a chance to watch him grow in the ring, and he continue. He, he was good when he first came to us, and he's gotten even better. And thing about it is, for the and Wick, you've got to back me up on this one because you and I are in the same boat. We've watched the progression of Ace Haven to where he is more. I'm not going to use the word ring general, but I'm going to say very ring experienced and very ring savvy. He has come a long way in a short amount of time. So oh what, yes, he sure has. I mean, I mean, we both agreed to that. We said it in public and in private, and on the road. Yep. Now, from this vantage into point, his face. Yeah, into his face too, <laughs> and on the telephone. I like Ace, I like Ace. But what I want to know is if his wife is quick to give the stink out to anybody. I wonder what she thinks about this. I think that's the, the determining factor in this. Tommy Gage may want a may want Amy Haven, but Amy Haven is taken. Tommy Gage is in a lot of trouble. When you. That's Boils down to when you start adding family to the mix, it does get personal, and therein lies the rub. I'm going to lay this one out there. Blood, rub yeah, never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I love it. When family gets involved, blood is thicker than water, but by the same token, for the thickness of blood, it can be a sticking point and a huge distraction. So Ace is going to have to be completely and totally focused on Tommy Gage this coming Saturday night, or Tommy Gage, as sneaky as he can be, he will find a way to get a one, two, three on Ace Haven real quick, and the last hero could fall very quickly this Saturday night in Bell City. But how does he focus? How does he focus? Yeah, you got your wife when, out when, there. When that's the wife what I'm saying. An eye to Tommy Gage. How do you stay focused on your opponent? Therein lies the funny part, because the simple fact of life, you have to look at it from every perspective. We all have family, and we know what happens when our family gets threatened. We know what happens when somebody intrudes, I'll use the phrase, in our bubbles, respectively. In our respective bubbles. No relation to the bubbles over in Atlanta. The Cheetah, how you doing? Good. Glad to know you're listening. I but, thought we were just talking about Paulie's brain. Nah. Woo. Nah. Make it to nuts. That's, that's $25. Stop that now. Uh, hey, hey, I got a shoot DVD coming out in July. Man. Oh, three orders on right now. Three orders on <laughs> Okay, Smart Rage. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, let me go ahead and wow. throw, let's go ahead and let's, wow. let's no, no, yes, no, you can't go ahead and spy that. Yes, that I can. <laughs> you, we can save the fire back, save the backlog for um to be determined tomorrow night at nine o'clock Central Time. We'll be on Ringside Radio Network and be on Ringside's radio radio app. But, but Wick, I like you, I really do, and I respect you. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and be the first to pre-order my shoot DVD. Yeah, we're gonna do one and uh, and his barbecue oh. sauce. It's called Boots to Balls. Um, and we're not, we're not getting a comedian involved. We're going to kick Leon the bull stretcher. Of course, he says I had to get a step ladder to reach his balls. I was like, not demo, saggy, silly putty and rocks. <laughs> Come on. In action this Saturday night in Pell City, part of Global Championship Wrestling's Global Warfare 2015. Shane Andrews taking on the Latin sensation Antonio Garza. Dog, you're up first. The bad boy, Shane Andrews, currently working in Ohio Valley Wrestling, working all over Tennessee. You know, when we started this program, television-wise, back in January, we made a promise to each other. And, you know, I told the booking committee and all the powers that be before we were the powers, powers that, that be, be. that uh, we needed to bring a couple of new people every show. Every show, there needed to be two new stars 
one, it gives guys a chance to work. And second, it gives the people so many shows, and Wicked Nemesis including, they'll use the same six guys. And, you know, that's not a show to me. I grew up watching World Championship Wrestling and the NWA, and you saw different people, you know, you got to have your mulkies. And I hope that Ace Haven, he kind of looks like a mulky. But, uh, you know, I hope that uh, he can get his focus on his opponent, Tyler Gates. You know, eight years ago, that the young man came and did the uh, Mad Dog's House of Pain training thing with the Midnight Express, Express. Dennis Condry, and beautiful Bobby Eaton. And uh, he was straight out of just knowing how to bump. So he has come a long way. And it's not because I work in Piedmont occasionally that I say this, but he has come a long way. But that distraction could be bad. But Shane Andrews, the bad boy, taking on Latino sensation, Antonio Garza. I mean, we're going to see some high-flying stuff that you're not going to see anywhere other than maybe in the cage. But there's limitations to that cage. You know, of course, we know that Cruz is going to climb it. We know that Spiral is going to climb it. We know that O'Hagan has the capability of climbing it. It's going to be crazier than banana feeding time in the monkey cage. It's going to be nuts. Don't say it, Wick. <laughs> Wilder in a Saturday, Saturday night frolic. <laughs> frolic, that's right. <laughs> Rougher in a night in jail. Yes, indeed. That's uh, the colonel saying. But uh, Garza has the experience. He's been wrestling over 20 years. Uh, bad boy better bring his A game. And uh, with if you're going to put the moniker bad boy on your name... It, I've seen him wrestle in, in Georgia and stuff, and he the guy does have good skills and is a good mat wrestler as well as a high flyer. So uh, um, that's a toss up, man. That it's just a, it. You know, you got two guys that I've never seen touch before, so I really can't say. I mean, I think Garza is in trouble uh, because you know the fans are so fickle. One moment they will cheer that guy, and the next moment they're booing him. So, I don't know. I mean, if he has the fan support, he might can pull one out. Wicked Nemesis, you're up. Well, Antonio seems to uh, have a love-hate relationship with the rules. So, Shane Andrews is very consistent. Shane Shane Andrews will take you to the mat and very easily make you submit. Uh, As you said, this is definitely a toss-up. But the way things are leaning... Uh, I'm going to have to go with Antonio on this one. Robert Cosper. I, I'm going to, I'm going to say it like this. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really a Garza fan, but I do like to see him win. Cause the Mexican joint down the road in Pell city extends happy hour to after the show. Ah, Margarita's when he wins. That's why you um, hit the door running. No yeah, kidding. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. If Garza gets the win, I'm gone, man. I Joe Nelson, hate. you might need to tell Joe Nelson because he's one of the biggest haters of Garza ever. He, he will is. sit there he and boo him. and jeer the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, anyone, Cosper, Cosper, for anybody that's listened to your commentary uh, with Fast Eddie Lane, I would think that you actually like Cos or do you actually like Antonio Garza? I don't know about that, Cos. <laughs> He's I always, enjoy making fun of Antonio. He says, Garza. "Senor, cheese yeah, that, please, yeah, Senor." Yes, uh, two more, Cerveza. Uh, yeah, taquitos. Uh, yeah, no. Hey, look, when Garza wins, hey, we all win. I, I, that I'll tell you. Uh, like I said, happy hours extended on a Garza win down the road. I'm yeah. just glad to know that I'm part of the PTV now, and I'll get invited to that. Oh, yeah. You know, we got that Cristal ordered, and because yeah. he said he didn't like Dom Perignon, right. I was like. Well, at least AJ's not on our team. We want to have Hennessy and Coke, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever that Now, stuff wait is. a minute. I didn't hear you complain the first time that I broke out the Quel- uh, Cuervo 1800 silver. Yeah, that that's that has nothing to do with Hennessy now, does yeah. it? <laughs> I, I'm not a drinker, sir. Sure. You know, Hennessy get all these classy commercials, but it still yeah. tastes like garbage. Yeah, AJ wins. Uh, if AJ, if AJ, if AJ wins, oh. he comes out. If AJ survives this Saturday, mm-hmm. I'll go on record and tell you, I'll – I'll spring for the Ciroc for that one. How about will you spring for some great Fago or Fanta? Yeah, the Fago. Ciroc mixes with Fago. great Fago. Fago. 
perfect. <laughs> I would actually prefer great knee high, but we'll talk later. Um, oh, the great drying. Excuse well, me, sir. Excuse me. And actually, do me a favor, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break system for just a hot second because we're talking about the different um, adult libations, and I feel that I can speak on behalf of the majority of us here on this panel right now because a longtime friend, um, gentleman by the name of Tom Stedham, used to run the Southern Fighting Alliance out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, when you see the new Johnny Walker commercials for Johnny Walker Scotch, especially the one of the Origins episode, you'll recognize, for our friends in all, all across Alabama, you'll recognize Tom Stedham in the role of Johnny Walker. So I would like to say on all of, behalf of all of us with Global Championship Wrestling, congratulations to Tom Stedham. That is a great role and a great catch for you, sir, and our continued best for your career. And yeah. he is a student of uh, Adrian Street from yeah. the yes. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I'm really cool. Thank you for picking up your sponsorship of, sponsorship of the show for uh, yeah. Much yeah yeah that's good. Man, that's good. Right. good new sponsor on board. Man. Yes Very yeah good. we got to work. Ready to go, brother. You got hey go. the old school rule of thumb. Anytime you mention something by brand name, you're officially responsible for getting it on board. That actually applies to all the Beyond Ringside family of shows, including GCW Radio especially GCW Radio. From that vantage point, I'm going to go ahead and lay this one out there like this. As it pertains to Antonio Garza and Shane Andrews, you have a very unique opportunity this coming Saturday night in Pell City because Antonio Garza, longtime fans of GCW, are going to know the fact that Garza has become more and more focused, more and more determined over the last few months inside the ring. Yeah, his green card depends on it. No, he's from a full the, citizen now. From yeah, it does. Uh, he is a full citizen. American uh, way. Yeah, to get in there and get certified. He's been a citizen for about four years. Actually, yeah, yeah. I thought it was three, but that's what I get for thinking. But this Saturday night, you have an opportunity for Garza to take on someone he's never faced before in the southeastern U.S. in the bad boy Shane Andrews, and that happens this Saturday night in Pell City. For those who called themselves wrestling purists, this is a don't miss match. And I'm going to sit back and say this will also be your don't blink match of the night. For the simple reason, you've got two people that can hit any gear at any time. Plain and simple, this is going to be one you don't want to miss. Because A, it's the first time these two have met. B, anything legitimately, anything can happen. When Antonio Garza meets Shane Andrews. Moving on, this Saturday night, Pell City, Alabama Global Warfare 2015. The Archangel Gabriel taking on the Mystic Mudbone. Wick, you're up first. Mr. Nemesis. Well, well uh, the Archangel Gabriel Dean has a lot to prove. A newcomer to GCW, but I think he is up for the challenge. Mudbone, one of the most underrated wrestlers in the Southeast. Amen. Uh, I do believe that the Archangel will come out on top this time because I hope, I hope he's learned a little bit from his last match with Mudbone. Robert Cosper. <laughs> As we come to me, yeah, Mudbone is probably the most underrated. Wick and I are going to completely agree. I know that I know that pains you. No, I re I respect Wick. He's just you know we can we can argue all day about global warfare and he'll still be wrong. But the thing is, it, where Mudbones is concerned, yes, completely the most underrated guy, one of the most dangerous men in wrestling. And now I'm going to say the love child of Coco Beware here. <laughs> Still doesn't have a hope in hell against Mudbone. He found that out last time. He's going to find it out again this Saturday night. So I'm, I'm Mudbone all day. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Well, it, it's a hard. Gabriel Dean was one of the last students I trained before the PTB was formed. Um, I showed the the kid, and I mean he's like 22. He was the first one to get his video picked up by Tough Enough, and. No, you know, and people say, well, that's whatever, WWE, whatever. But he got his video put on the YouTube page of WWE on WWE.com when they first, the, the second week that they actually put out the deal. He knows how to market himself. He's a former gymnast. Um, he, he's got some high-flying stuff. You know, Mudbone, we are no strangers. <laughs> 
we we have bar we have beat each other's head in. I've cracked his paint. He's knocked me out. Would roll the bones. He Gabriel's just got to keep moving. You know, he called me up on the phone. He goes, "Look, I know you might not let anybody come up and train now that the PTB's in full fashion and stuff." So now you can get over there and roll around. Maybe you can call Dylan Cook and see if he can come up and roll around with you. But. <laughs> That didn't happen. It's like uh, the kid waiting for the tooth fairy when he's 25. It just, you know, when you get your wisdom teeth cut out, I think it's time to stop believing in the tooth fairy. But he's got to keep moving. He's got to be fast. He's got to have an aerial tactic. You don't want that man. There's a spine buster that could happen at any moment. Good boy. Roll, roll the bones could happen at any moment. And he's got this neck, he's got this spinning neck breaker that's like Rick Rude's. Uh, there's a second reference to the rude, right. the Grace, ravishing Grace one. Of all time, in my He's opinion. got like this neck breaker thing that goes into a back breaker and goes into like almost like a side effect for the Hardy Boy fans out there. And uh, it's, he's just dangerous. I mean, if if he can't out wrestle you, he's got so many tricks that he, he's got fireball, he's got powder. You know, he's he's brought out a snake before. Uh, he's used his cane. Uh, the guy is just out there. There is no other wrestler anywhere in the world that wrestles like Mudbone. He's the mystic from San Monique. People are scared of him. There are, there are not a lot of wrestlers out there that are in this business today that make children run. Hmm. He almost caused a riot. <laughs> he made a woman come to the back. And, my kids. And, and saying that he, he had overstepped his bounds. Heck, Eddie, you know you came yeah, got me. I was there. <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. The kids were crying, but mom was crying. I mean, I'm like, lady, you're thirty something years old, and years you're making this situation man. worse. Amen. This, this kid's gonna see mud bone in his closet and under his bed for the rest of his life, and I'm not paying for that therapy. Yeah, keep pushing the point. Yeah, just, just just let it go. Get away from him. Yeah. It's, if you man. know the great whites in the water, don't go swimming with an open cut because yeah. you're asking for it. Yes. It is 8.57 p.m. on this Tuesday night, the 26th day of May 2015. You're listening to Global Championship Wrestling's GCW Radio, Fast Eddie Lane, Wicked Nemesis, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, The Cause, Robert Cosper, as we are taking a look at Global Warfare 2015, slated for this Saturday night, May 30th, in Pell City, Alabama, at the Pell City Civic Center. Bell time, 7.30 p.m. Tickets are only $10 each. Now, let me get, before I go any further, I want to remind everybody listening, both live and on the tape side, if you're catching us on replay, if you are in the southeastern U.S. and you would like to come to this event, Pell City, Alabama, very easy to get to, straight off of I-20 in Alabama. While they last, you can still reserve ringside seats by sending an email to GCW Media. Once again, that is GCW Media at Yahoo.com. Our front office monitors that email address on a daily basis. Once again, while they last, and I'm not sure of the availability. I've not spoken to the front office today as at the time of this taping. or at the time of this live broadcast. So from that vantage point, if you are able to make it and you want to try to get ringside seats while they are still available, or depending on availability, I should say. I apologize. My bad on that one. GCW Media at Yahoo.com. I'm taking a look at this match, the Archangel Gabriel taking on the Mystic Mudbone. And uh, Mad Dog, I'm surprised you forgot this. For the length of time, you and I have both known Mudbone. Remember, they call him the Mystic for a reason. I have seen this person cast a spell on somebody. I have seen this person basically hypnotize somebody into surrendering a match and surrendering their will. The question is, you have a classic battle of an angel versus a demon, practically. And in this circumstance, remember, Gabriel didn't fare as well as he might have wanted to in their previous outing. But the trick to it all is, how much did he learn? He's still very young in the business. Mudbone is one of the most seasoned veterans you will ever find a tremendous hand inside the ring. Not to mention, I've used the word 
gifted as far as being a gifted competitor goes. It's true. This is a person you don't blink when you're around because he will absolutely flatten you in about 0.1 seconds. Now, I got to ask you this. Go ahead. There was a rumor, and I, I was in the locker room during this, that there were two mud bones a couple months ago. I heard that from yeah. the Pharrells, my little girl. and Yeah, I had to double check and make sure because I had just bought my glasses and I thought I was, I was afraid that I was actually having a visible hallucination. It doesn't take much to confuse the Pharrells. Let me just go ahead and throw that out. I thought you were going to say it doesn't take that much to confuse me and I would have said, uh, yeah, and your point is. No, it doesn't take much to confuse you. I wasn't going to really get into that one. But the Burrell family, were they're still talking about it. There was two of them. Mama. I said, what are you talking about? Mama, there's another mud bone. Mama. No, you got to put an ass on there. I know bone. it. I know it. He was there. And then he's there. I don't understand. I'm sorry. And to, uh, to effectively known as louder little girl, you are missed. Plain and simple. Oh, she'll be there this week. She she's already got her some reserved CDs. But in this circumstance, with Gabriel taking on Mudbone, now I don't know if Gabriel may have learned enough to topple the Mystic. But I'm going to sit back and say, Mudbone better be careful because surprises can happen at the drop of the hat or a wave of the magic wand. Real quick, now that we're past the top of the hour, let me go ahead and say this real quick. For everybody tuning in for Beyond Ringside Back to Basics, we are going to run a little bit over the 9 o'clock hour before we shift over to Back to Basics. Coming up in just a little while here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network, we are going to be joined by the current and reigning GCW heavyweight champion, A. J. Steele during Beyond Ringside Back to Basics. Hang with us because this party is going to continue. In a just sign, here's your breaking exclusive match. Total protection. Mr. Hughes. You've seen him on WCW, WWE. You have seen him on international pay-per-views. He will be in Pell City, Alabama this coming Saturday night, May 30th, and he will be taking on, if my notes are correct, the gentleman's name is Odinson. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, you're up first. <laughs> Total protection, Mr. Hughes, the man with the Sprint PCS phone, the man who guarded Y2J, Chris Jericho, took the urn from The Undertaker, ECW, WCW, WWE Superstar, and GCW Superstar for many times. Yep. Uh, I just hope he doesn't bring his manager. It's still real to me, damn it, David Wells, because that guy gets on my nerves more than... Uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide. I hate to do it, but I thought you said still well for a second. I just had a flashback to a league of their own. Still well, darling. Still well, still Angel. Well. <laughs> He's about the same. I think still well grew up. He's yeah. not cool enough to be chunk. So, uh, <laughs> according to my good friend, Laura Freeman, uh, sloth is uh, Leon the Bull Stresser. Don't. <laughs> To which I got one thing to say. Hold on. Where is it at? Go! Thank you. Robert Cosper, you're up. I'm still hung up on the full stretch of the comment because, man, that's, a, that's spot on. But, uh, if they remake it, he's got a job. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with Mr. Hughes, man. Uh, look at the experience. I mean, again, Dan hit on, on so many of his high points. Another high point right there with Lex Luger when Lex Luger was your WCW. That's right. He's a millennium man with the yeah. sonic boom. Goodness boom. gracious. Yeah. Man. He's been around, man. He, he knows the business, and he's been successful everywhere he's been. So, uh, you use him crooked fingers, pokey and eye. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hughes, my man. All day. Wicked nemesis. Uh, Mr. Hughes, you can't go against uh, Total Protection. So, I will have to sit back and say I am at a unique disadvantage because I have not had the opportunity to really do my homework on Odinson since this match has just recently been signed within the last 36 hours and I have been constantly on the road and in the office trying to get stuff worked out for this weekend. From this vantage point, I'm going to sit back and say knowing the reputation of Total Protection, Curtis Hughes, Odinson is in the in for the fight of his life, and I am going to completely and totally stop there because there's too many references I'd like to make, and the movie is still in theaters. The GC well, o- Odinson is a big guy now. See, I'm glad you know him. I, I've only seen footage. You know, oh, he's really good, and that guy can wrestle. But uh, you know, never underestimate uh, a veteran. Amen. 
the GCW Women's Championship will be on the line and represented this Saturday night at Global Warfare 2015 as Calm Like a Bomb Pandora defends against Jesse Bell Smothers. Robert Cosper, you're up first. Oh, that's easy. Pandora has sold out. Um, Jesse Bell Summers. I'm looking forward to seeing her with the GCW Ladies Championship. Go ahead and take Pandora out right there in that match so she's not a nuisance in the main event. So, yeah, right exactly. There. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. You know, I've become very accustomed to another second generation star, Jesse Bell Smothered, the Southern Bell. And, you know, growing up, my mom always used to say, don't piss a redhead off. Yeah. That's a good you know, people say ginger or whatever. This this girl can fight. She's like a scrapper. Now, I'm not taking anything away from my old valet, Pandora, but how how good is her neck? You know, she took, How's that back? She, she took a power, she took a dog bomb right there and, you know, I'm used to tossing men around, and, you know, she slapped my face. So I gave her a little Ike Turner, you know, and what's love got to do with it? Not a damn thing. <laughs> no I'm thing. just saying, I'm just saying I had to put her flatter in a pancake, and I'm used to throwing men around the size of Mr. Braddock, Mr. A.J. Steele, Mr. Micah Taylor. The, you know, this chick weighed weigh 110, 115 pounds, and she landed right on the base of her skull and neck. And, you know, she was finally getting over to, from the spear from Clyde Braddock several months ago, ago. you know, so. Well, something to keep in mind I, on, the so, fifth, uh, on the third. Yeah, it, you know, we throwing out stuff. We talking about the past where we should be talking about the present and the future. We're we're just talking about. No, no, this. I'm just saying again. Yeah, Braddock, Braddock spared her. So, he did. I mean, he did. Where, where's where's this unity at, man? And there are a lot of fans out there. We ran into some, you know, earlier in the week, and uh, you know. I think Kaj said it best. He says, we got ice water rolling through our veins. We got nerves of steel. And we, we're, just, we're just living the dream. Making money, making miles. And money will repair any bad friendships or hardships that's going to. If you're making money together, I think Terry Funk put it best with him and Mick Foley. You know, they beat hell out of each other, blew up the ring, set each other on fire and everything. And they got over it. You know, you got a man like. The cause, the cause of it all, Robert Cosper. He What's is, causing he is, all this? He has put together some. He has put together a maniacal, uh, homicidal, genocidal. Sabu's not around, so we'll just steal all his stuff and just tell you <laughs> that there has never been a more dangerous team than it. And this is history. I, I looked this up. There is never, ever, ever, and write that down, ever been a 12-man steel cage. There's been war games and stuff, but there's never been 12-man elimination style ever in the history of professional wrestling. So come see a part of history. Amen. Come see a ladies' match where the girls can actually work. You're jumping yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump you. No, but... you actually you jumped Wick because he was next in rotation. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. And of course, Eddie just tells us the rotation. You know, oh, I, I just can't keep. To, as usual. Well, these cold, frothy beverages are throwing me off. No, it's, it's, it's the Lane way. It's the blame way. Lane? Are blame we back lane. to blaming him? Hashtag Blame Lane. Sure, why not? What the hell? We don't have cause and effect on BR anymore. So obviously. that's that's your fault. <laughs> The no, door, my fault, the door has fault. look rocket scientist. The G, or excuse me, Cosper scientist. The door has been opened since the doors reopened on BR. You have opted to go ahead and go on hiatus. That's why you're down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, right now, and enjo enjoying a nice, cold, refreshing libation. Wicked Nemesis, you're up. GCW Women's Championship match. Okay, <laughs> Jesse Bell. Uh, a very good wrestler, but does Jesse Bell really tip the point in any direction in women's wrestling? No. Calm like a bomb, Pandora does. Jesse Bell has been one of those people that has just went and done as she pleased, but this Saturday, Hell City, Alabama, Hell City Civic Center, she has to face a very mad and very PO'd Calm like a bomb, Pandora. I think Jesse Bell has her work cut out for her. 
I think she has walked into a hornet's nest. Dan, you dog bombed her, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you about broke her neck. We all saw it. I almost broke her neck. I almost broke her freaking neck. Yeah. You also put her in the dog stretch, not to be confused with the camel clutch or the canine Cause recliner. Because that was terrible. Yeah. Uh, but Dan, you didn't kill her. Calm like a bomb, Pandora is like an Irish banshee. You have to kill her at the base. If not, she's going to keep coming back, and eventually she's going to drive you insane. I know this. She <laughs> cut my hair off. She got speared by, uh, or as we call it, harpooned by Clyde Braddock, and she deserved every bit of that. Yes, she did. But she did. Calm like a bomb, Pandora, against Jesse Bell Smothers. Calm like a bomb, Pandora, I feel, is going to win this. I'm going to lay this out there real quick because in Calm Like a Bomb Pandora, you have a woman who can go in a traditional technical style if she wants to, and she can slug it out with the best of them. Jesse Bell Smothers, tremendous in-ring talent. Take nothing away from her. I'm going to lay this one out there for public edification. One of her best friends in the whole wide world is the fabulous Mickey Knuckles, who is not only known in the realm of traditional wrestling, but is also known in the world of ultraviolet, hardcore weapons matches. You don't hang around with someone like Mickey Knuckles. And Rougher this doesn't... Jail. <laughs> Say what? Rougher than a night in jail. Amen. And some of it doesn't rub off on you. So I'm going to sit back, and my hypothesis is very simple on this. Jesse Bell, I believe, can probably try to mix, and here's the key word on this, try to mix it up. The trick for Jesse Bell Smothers is to be able to mix it up and switch attacks at the drop of a hat. Because they're going to be able to match stride for stride. This is a very evenly set match, in my opinion. I've been known to be right more often than not when it comes to something like this. This match is a match where it can genuinely go either way. Pandora is going to fight tooth and nail to keep that women's championship. Jesse Bell is going to fight tooth and nail to win that championship. What's going to happen? You've got to be there Saturday night in Pell City to find out. And let's take one more look at it. Let's be unbiased. Let's be straight ahead on this. 12-man cage elimination warfare. The PTB Foundation. The GCW Tag Team Champions. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer and Micah Taylor. One of the most decorated champions in GCW history. Mr. O'Hagan. One of the most gifted cruiserweights out there in Mike Cruz. In his name. It must be true. The Circle of Disrespect, part of the foundation of professional wrestling, along with Cruz, Francisco Chiazzo, the Supreme Fachim, and the Emerald Emperor, Simon Says. Taking on the GCW Heavyweight Champion, A.J. Steele. The GCW Middleweight Champion, Spiral. Former GCW Tag Team Champions, and I know that's got to hurt for, to hear, Wick. Clyde Braddock and Steve Stiles, the Sevenfold Saints. The Dream Chaser, Dylan Cook. Nightmare. <laughs> and the Leon the Bull Stressor. You're going to castrate the bull. I knew you'd say that sooner or later. I, I saw that Jack one coming a mile away. Jack Hanna told me. I said, you ever mess with a bull, Jack? Yeah, I suggest castration. I said, yeah. well, by God, when I do it, I'm going to say Jack Hanna said so. You mess with the bull, you take the horns. I'm going to dehorn <laughs> him. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm going to dehorn the bull. You know, you used to lop the... I grew up on a dairy farm. We used to lop the horns off uh, bulls all the time. Except I'm not going to bring a cauterizer to seal up that bleeding. Nah, he's just going to let him bleed. He's, he's a, a bleeder. bleeder. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take point on this one. Because I've said this before and I'll say it again. Because Wick said this a few weeks previous on the To Be Determined show. He wanted to make a reference to... And I'm flattered and I am humbled to the fact that he wanted to make it the nickname something like Team Lane or Team Commish. Lane Lane. What I was of course you do. But let me go ahead and say it like this. For as much as I understand and respect the combination known as the PTB Foundation, 
I'm going to sit back and look at it like this. A.J. Steele, Spiral, Braddock, Styles, Bull, Cook. They have been attacked from behind. They've been attacked with object. They've been attacked gang warfare style. But the fact of the matter is, they keep getting back up. Sawyer, you and I have gone way far back in time together. You and I both understand the concept. It's not how hard you get hit. It's not the fact that you get knocked down. It's the factor of how many times you get back up. Everybody on this team exemplifies what you used to call the spirit of global championship wrestling, the spirit of GCW. So if I put a nickname on anything for AJ Spiral, the Saints, Bull and Cook, I'm going to sit back and say they represent, they exemplify, they are the living embodiment of the spirit of GCW. And this Saturday night, Pell City, Alabama, the PTB Foundation, you can laugh, you can joke, you can cut up, throw one-liners all you want to. You can hurl barbs all day long. But in this cage elimination match, anything can happen. Two men start the match. Coin toss is held. There will be an advantage. The trick to this whole scenario is you can be pinned or submitted throughout the course of the match. The match can only be ended when the last person of a team submits or is pinned. Mm-hmm. And there yeah, is no disqualification. Let's Correct. Just, Correct. No disqualification. Did we say no disqualification? One more time. No disqualification. Well, considering the fact that y'all like to be the ones who will bring in brass knuckles or try to take somebody out with their own, per se, crutch if they're injured, or in your case, a dog collar, that works to your advantage to a degree. But I'll say this. It also works to the side of the spirit of GCW because they know to look out for anything at any time from anyone. Cosper, and, your thoughts. That, that, yeah, hold yeah, hold yeah. on before you go, go to Cosper. Yeah, i got to say ahead. one thing before because this involves you, sir. Oh, absolutely. It took six of them, well, so five, because Stumbling Styles was not there. So he was stumbling. His stumbling Styles, he, Stumbelina, he was not there because of his waft leg, little tiny Tim, whatever. Yeah, uh, we've seen an ongoing theme. It took old. five men to take down the cause. The cause. I'm an advisor. It was at the end of the television show. Everyone saw it. It really takes five men to take on an advisor, yeah. a guy who is not a wrestler. I mean, we could be filing that. charges right now. We, we've got a lawyer on retainer, uh, even as we speak. And hold it, it. It's good in this business to have. Let me, we're not talking Howard C. Cross. We're talking a legitimate lawyer that is going to be watching. The yeah. athletic commission is watching. I said, boys, if you're squeamish, this parental guidance is suggested. Yes. You know, keep seeing all these kids. I can't wait to the cage match. I've never seen one before. You're going to be changed forever. You'll never and forget this one. Thinking no. is 50 50. 50% maybe, 50% wrong. And I don't care if they call themselves the Gala GCW, if they dress in drag and show up with si- Simon Sherman in their corner, they're going to be in <laughs> big, big, big trouble. You know, there's going to be big trouble in Little Pell City. I'm just going to tell you that, and I'll toss it to the man. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, because you opened up a little can of worms there that I'm going to bring up, because if you want to talk about assaults, you want to talk about attacks, you want to talk about lawyers, remember, let's go back in time. I never did file any formal charges against Micah Taylor when the, th- the night in... Palmerdale, Alabama, that he choked me out in what was called a sleeper hole. But you and I both know better than that because you watched it and you even sat back and said, I'll attest to the fact that that was a choke. Not to mention the fact that Micah Taylor assaulted me with a steel chair in the middle of the ring right after the factor of you deciding to show exactly what you were made of all over again. So if you want to talk lawyers and boardrooms, let's go ahead and bring this public for a second. Oh, no, no. Let's just don't talk about the past. We're talking about the present and the future. Micah Taylor has had his eyes checked out. He's had RK surgery now. He was swinging at Spiral. And he accidentally hit you. That that you can't help it when a man, you know, he was a little discombobbled. You know, things maybe happen. yeah, things happen. This is just this is just collateral damage of professional wrestling. Lane, if you ask always, me, Lane lives in the past. He does. No, we're I'll let you. Know. out of it. We're gonna, we're going to yeah. just fight yeah, this we're gonna Saturday. Do, we're going to do business. As Wick likes to say, and he is a brilliant man. This is an event, but this is going to be a fight. 
You know, if if, if mommy and daddy don't let the little Bobby watch uh, the UFC when it comes on, he don't want to see this because unlike the UFC, I can kick you with my boots on. And I got a new pair of biker boots that I love to just stump a mud hole on somebody and walk it dry. And I got a few targets that I'm looking at across that ring May 30th. Yeah. Yeah, Cause real quick. But no, no, it's not going to be real quick because I've had to wait. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna get serious. We're gonna quit being funny for a minute. We're, we're gonna get serious. Yeah. And it's like you said, Eddie. And I don't, I don't know that people are clear on this. Eliminations can take place at any time. One team will have that one man advantage. But people can be eliminated, so it can be a two man advantage, a three. And I'm telling you, we're, we're coming to do business. We're coming to take people out. The bullseyes on AJ Steele. The bulls, bullseyes on Spiral. <laughs> Earlier in the show, how Dan's trained uh, Dylan Cook. How he's trained the bull. Same deal, Micah, Micah's trained Spiral. Micah's trained Braddock. Micah's trained uh, Styles. And let's look at it. I mean, yeah, you teach, them th- you teach them everything they know. You don't teach them everything you know. There's an annihilation going to take place on Saturday night. And, and it's like Stan, I'm, I'm reading the chat room over here. Stan Grubb, a uh, good guy, but talking about the PTB doesn't exactly inspire fear. <laughs> tune in Saturday night, brother. Tune, tune in Saturday night. Stan, we'll come you. to your house, and we'll, we're not going to be like the Mormons knocking and try to spread the gospel. Yeah. We, we will show you what fear is. Yeah. Hey, Cuz, who trained you? It doesn't matter who trained me. I'm an advisor. Nobody. And, Nobody. But see, Nobody. That's, you were Matt Murdoch. That's the thing, man. That's what you keep missing, man. No, that's I don't miss it. I, I no, see it's no, 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 guess what you miss. You're worried about me being caught up in the business, me understanding this, me being trained here. I'm an advisor. Make your Shut noise. that dog up over there. Yeah, Who's make, over make there? Make your noise. Better promo than what you have been. Yeah, good God. You, you, want promo, you, you'll get a promo Saturday night. You want a promo oh, Saturday so, night? Dear God, I'm begging you. That's not a, don't beg, brother. Don't beg. I'll bring it to you. But the thing's going to be, man, the thing's going to be from day one, Wick, you underestimate me. You talk about I've not been trained. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. From day one, man, I've been a step ahead of you. The first night in the business, we started taking people out. The next night I was involved in the business with the PTP, what did we do? We took the World Tag Team Championship off of your prize team and your Sevenfold Saints. Hey, Cause. I you wipe, Cause, you wipe your feet ring, before you get in the ring? Bring it. Cause, you wipe your feet before you get in the ring? You're damn right, I nope. do. Nope. No, you do not. Next question. We no, have a call for 478. I believe that's what this is. For the business, you're damn right, I do. To keep his jewelry. Oh, time, yes. I'm not no, bringing it back this time. No wedding rings come flying. Yeah, hey, that's, that's fine. That's there's, cool. there's not one that's going to fly, I assure you. There's not mm-hmm. one that's going to fly. Well, Vic, I'm telling you, we've tied up once. You want to tie up again, man. We're outside that cage. Bring it, man. We've got a game plan waiting for you. I used to respect you. Actually, I do still respect you. Well, I'll making, respect the heck out of you. You're making just, some bad decisions, man. You're making some oh, bad yeah. decisions. Speaking of the juice... The juice is loose, so. Bring it, man. Are you talking Starburst? Yes, I love Starburst. I'm the lyrical Starburst, the lyrical expert, Mr. Terminal Intent, the working nemesis. Folks, real quick, we are running way over. Back to basics. It's going to kick off in just a couple of seconds. Let me go ahead and lay it, take it around the horn one more time. Folks, I'm going to put it into what we call on the Beyond Ringside family of shows as last call. In other words, your final touch, final statement, final, final thought, so to speak. Thank you, Jerry Springer, wherever you may be. And first off, Wicked Nemesis, it's on you. This Saturday, Global Warfare, the very balance of GCW hangs in our hands. We understand that. Kaz understands that. Dan understands that. AJ, Spiral, Sevenfold Saints. Don't be a maybe. Be a definite forever forward. Uh, Tomorrow night, we will continue this conversation live, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. On the Beyond Ringside Radio Network, Beyond Ringside app. Thank you to everybody that has checked us out, everybody that has downloaded it. If you haven't, 
give us just give us a chance. That's all we ask. You will enjoy the Beyond Ringside Radio app. And like I've said before, whenever you start clearing out space, the Beyond Ringside Radio app is one that you will not want to clear out. Robert Cosper, it's on you. His part right there is right about your app. Keep your app. That's great. Uh, now, speaking of Beyond Ringside family of shows and things where Lane got on here and kicked everybody off, um, I do want to throw out from the Cause and Effect family, man. It is the Effect's birthday, so that's going to be my last call, final shot. Happy birthday to him. And as far as Saturday night goes, Wick, friendships aside, man, respect aside, I'm going to see you Saturday. The PTV Foundation's coming, and it's on. Man. You guys are going down. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. You thought you'd seen bad? You're going to see bad this Saturday night. It's coming. It's coming. And it's not going to be pretty. I do this for a living. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in my life. I rep 535 in the gym the other day, unlike Bull with his 35s. <laughs> yeah, 500. I go cool. to a real gym. I've been doing Hindu squats. I've been doing jujitsu twice a day. This man's been training. He's been lifted. He's been in the ring. He's ready to go. We don't have to say another damn word. You know what we're made of. We're going to do our talking in the ring. And may the best team win. And that will be the team of PTB Foundation, COD, Five Star Fight Club, Micah Taylor. Sybil. If Sybil gets in the ring, I will make an example of her. What Chris Brown did to Rihanna will be no- <laughs> I will bite a bitch. Oh. <laughs> that dog's gonna bite. Man. Yeah, that's right. Here, the background. That dog is gonna bite. I'm just glad that Kaz brought the dogs with us because when we walk up and down the beach, we get eyeballed anyway. But dogs are a chick magnet. The only way it could have been better is if I'd have brought my daughter. But uh, we're 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 ready for this Saturday night, Pell City, Alabama, May 30th. It's like the little kid waiting for Christmas, except Dylan Cook and Bull Stresser. They, they do not want Saturday to get here. They want an excuse. They want the cage not to show, but it's going to. Bull's going to get on Facebook and talk trash. Folks, I'm going to lay it out there like this. To put this world in proper perspective, Global Warfare, one of the biggest shows of the year for Global Championship Wrestling. Everything is in place. All the combustible elements are in line. You think that there has been a mushroom cloud from an A-bomb before? (laughs) The walls and the ceiling of the Pell City Civic Center are not going to be safe this coming Saturday night. You've got some great matches lined up. Ace Haven and Tommy Gage. Antonio Garza and Shane Andrews. The Archangel Gabriel and the Mystic Mudbone. Total protection, Curtis Hughes taking on Odin's son. The GCW Women's Championship, Calm Like a Bomb, Pandora taking on Jesse Bell Smothers. And in the main event, 12 men, two teams, cage elimination warfare, and that's an understatement. As the powers that be team up with the Foundation of Professional Wrestling, that is the origin of the nickname, the PTB Foundation, for those of you just now coming on board with us. Hashtag that, man. Hashtag that. Hashtag PTB Foundation. I know I started that a few weeks ago on that on that hashtag side. Francisco Chiazzo, Simon Says, Mike Cruz, Mr. O'Hagan, Micah Taylor, and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. And their liaisons, Theodore Tutwiler III and Robert Cosper. On the other side, the spirit of GCW as I've come to call it. The Dream Chaser, Dylan Cook, Leon the Bull Stresser, the Sevenfold Saints Clyde Braddock Stephen Styles, managed by the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the GCW Middleweight Champion Spiral, the GCW Heavyweight Champion AJ Steele, who will be joining us in just a few seconds right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network as soon as we kick off back to basics, wrapping up GCW Radio. He's on black people time, so I don't think he'll be on time. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to run late. Come on, you can laugh at that, Wick. It's funny. Oh, no, there's somebody else who's laughing at that. (laughs) 
Good. Bring him in. Uh, fine, I'll kill the bumper music. I don't give a darn right now. I will say, ladies and gentlemen, he is on the line. The GCW heavyweight champion, AJ Steele. What's up, my brother? Let me tell you something. I've been sitting here for the last seven minutes listening to all of the bullish shit that's been oh. falling out of Dan Sawyer's mouth. I bet you're drinking Dan Sawyer. When it Dan Sawyer, you, you, you're talking about you've been doing jujitsu two times a day. You wouldn't, you didn't even last seven minutes in the ring with me, so I know you ain't been, you can't even spell jujitsu. So better yet, you are the one that's going to probably send the cage to the wrong place because you're the one that doesn't want the cage to be crafted around the ring because you know exactly what I'm capable of doing because if you go back one year ago, what did I do in that cage? I won. I was the determining factor on our team. I was the one that won the cage match last year. If you 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 jog that little mutt memory of yours, you know exactly what I'm capable of doing. And the fact that you know that I'm capable of what I, what I can do is the reason why you don't want to get in the cage with me. So you can sit there and talk about all of the Richard Simmons workouts that you've been doing. But I guarantee you that when that cage goes around that ring, none of that with the stretch balls and all of the little Micah Taylor workouts that you've been doing, none of that is going to help you or your team come out victorious because I promise you, we are a team. You are a bunch of asses that are put together that are going to get slaughtered this Saturday. I'm going to go ahead and say, gentlemen, let's leave it right there. Folks, gcwpro.com. Keep your eyes on, open on our home site at GCW Pro Wrestling on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling is the Facebook fan page. Facebook.com slash GCW Pro is the friends page. I think before it's over with, we're going to be available on Google Plus 2 and all that other crap. I don't know. Just depends on exactly how much free time the web monkey has right now. No, no, no hold up on that. Mark your calendars. Don't give me a blank check. Don't give me a blank check. Hold up. Let's not stop right there. He may, he, he tried. You're a GCW heavyweight champion to try to make a point to the next GCW heavyweight champion, Mad Dog Van Sawyer. Well, do me a favor. If y'all would like to hang with us and we take it over into back to basics, that's fine. We're at the, t- we're at the bottom of the hour right now. We, um, we can go and slide a break in real quick. If y'all want to come back at the bottom of the hour, you're more than welcome to. We'll see how our time, uh, Permits. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm on, I'm on relaxation time, and this yeah. guy's trying to get my blood pressure up. Yeah, so that sounds like a coward to me. Then let me go ahead and do it like this. Remember, for now, this Saturday night, May 30th, Pell City, Alabama. Mark your calendars. Make your plans. Global Warfare 2015. We're gonna bl- the walls of the Pell City Civic Center will be rocked, and the ceiling will be no more. I tell you what, let's let's come back from the break from this because the last time we saw AJ Steele, what was that? Two weeks ago, you beat his ass from one end of the building to the other. What was that? Am I am I right in saying that? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, he beat your ass from one end of the building to the other. Yeah, the wicked threw something in my eyes, yeah. anthrax or yeah. something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> left over from Tommy Rich's uh, tooth part that he had right there. Did somebody that say tooth. Well, I guess the tooth. Oh, no, you didn't. We're not. I think you can book Tommy for a church speaking now, though, so don't worry. <laughs> then let me say it like this. We're signing out of Global Championship Wrestling's GCW Radio for right now. We're going to turn it over to Beyond Ringside Back to Basics, and hell's going to break loose all over again. Yeah, because we can. For the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Wick, say something. Yeah, something. Yeah. Close enough for the cause, Robert Cosper. We'll see you in a minute, over now. <laughs> for the Mad Dog, Dan Sawyer. 10 4, we'll see you Saturday. For I the, got things to do. For the GCW Heavyweight Champion, AJ Steele. I'm getting ready to just turn it all on again. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Hang with us. We'll be back. But for this part of the broadcast, Thank you for hanging out and thank you for joining us and join us next time. And we'll probably do this again on June 23rd as we go ringside and beyond with Global Championship Wrestling. Hang with us. We'll be right back on the live broadcasting side.